Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. This is my French flathead block and what I'm going to try and do is convert it from French military usage to car usage and use it probably in my truck. Um, what I like to do is to run the crab type distributor and the crab type distributor needs to be driven off the front of the cam. Here's a 59A type cam and there's the drive on the end. Here's the French cam in my milling machine and here you can see the the drive that is used for the 8BA type drive. Now what I noticed, can you see under there there's a like a piece of key steel, it's actually a piece of tool steel in a groove. Well that groove exists in both cams and I believe it exists in the same location and is a timing something to do when you're setting up the timing and what you can see there is that groove is in line with the slot so so what I've done is I put that cam there so what I've done I put that cam in here align this cutting tool with it with the slot align that thing down there with it then took it out and I put the 8BA one in. This is going to be the basis of my setup for modifying this camshaft to mimic the 59A. I need to cut this off and trim it to length and then machine the groove in it. I've never done this before so I'm having to think everything through from like first principles. Just looking at my clamping, I think I think the clamping is okay. This when this cuts it, it will be a relatively low, you know, for low forces involved. So I think everything should be okay. I think I'm just going to try and cut this off in the saw. And I'll cut it off slightly long so it takes a minimum of trimming after. And I think I'll probably do the trimming in the milling machine. Because this cam won't go down the spindle of my lathe. And while I do have a um, steady, I haven't actually ever used it. And it doesn't have the proper clamping pieces that I would need to hold this. But that might be a... That might be a um, little project in itself to get that out and working. But I don't really want to hold up this job to do it. So I'll take it out, take it to the saw and I'll saw it off. So that's the setup. That's the idea. I'm going to make this cam into a 59A cam. Okay, not sure I was recording then. I've got the 59A cam in the milling machine I've checked I've looked at my clamping thing I think the clamping's going to be okay and this cutter uh, the machine is in neutral and this cutter is able to rotate oh, it's going a bit tight anyway. the cutter is able to rotate So I'm just trying to get it okay height wise. I think that's touching at the top. So I'm going to raise the table a little bit. Actually I went the wrong way then didn't I? So I, I, I thought I was recording but I, I uh, think I've kind of missed it. Okay. 
this comes a bit sacrificial. I think I think it'd work actually. Okay, so let's see what sort of pattern that has made. But let's also, yeah, actually that's also. So let's set this to zero at that. Okay, so that's turning it away. So basically, what I so basically what I need to do now is to put the the uh, the other cam in, set it going, and then bring the other cam forward until that comes to zero. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, let's take this out. So here's my other cam. So that's got to go in there, and that's got to go in there, and down onto the V. So I'm assuming that's okay. I'm assuming that that is machining the same on all the cams. So when I start making this cut, what I should see is that the slot, so I'm just putting these things up. I've never done this before, that's why I'm kind of a little bit hesitant, you know, before I'm making sure that I'm doing the right thing before I move, move onwards. Now, what I should say is that this should cut the slot offset from that hole there. So let's just bring it in by hand and just do a test kind of by hand. I haven't got the overarm support, so that's the wrong way. Let's just do a little... exploratory... cut. from the end then yeah that that's offset isn't it that's good that's about right about right hopefully it's completely right so th that actually seems to be coping okay and it, it, it doesn't appear to be much difference top to bottom I think maybe yeah the table could come up a f couple of thou so let's just uh, Let's just bring the table up bare like that. So let, I don't think I'm going to bother with the overarm support because this isn't a heavy cutting. Oh, it isn't a heavy cut and it's a soft material. So let's just go for it then. Okay. The machine's very noisy, I don't know why.
I, according to the uh, numbers, that's the sign position. There we go, look at that, fantastic. Just so happens that that cutter was the right width. Okay, a little bit sort of chobbled away, but I've seen worse. Yeah, maybe the overarm support would have been handy, but this gets stuck. It's a right pain getting this out, and you have to swing this to the side. I thought I could get away with that, and hopefully I have. Okay, right. So that is that. It's a shame I haven't got like two or three more of these that I could do. I would actually rig the overarm support up if I was doing that, but I think that's a good job. So what I need to do is face that end off now. So what I think I'll do is I'll, I will loosen the top, swing it slightly to the side to come just over here and uh, just skim that down a bit. Okay, I'll get set up for that then and I will uh, come back when there's more to show. I think that looks okay looks pretty good actually for an amateur job you can see the offset we've got a bit of a bit of a touchy subject that is after the problems I've had with the roadster so hopefully that will go in the engine and hopefully a crab type distributor will bolt straight on okay good little job that I think if I was doing this job again or trying to do it on multiple cams I would um, pre-prepare the cam and set the lathe up and machine that part on the lathe because that that was okay but it wasn't great was it, it wasn't great but this is a non-functional face so as long as it clears the distributor and the groove is deep enough to drive the distributor that's the only criteria also what can also be said is that you know I've done this to my very best ability that tool there it's actually a piece of tool steel is very a very close fit in that groove there it's a 3 16 piece of tool steel and that is a 3 16 um, groove there down there so you know hopefully this is machined at the right angle but at the end of the day you can always adjust the timing anyway with it with a timing light and I will always set mine up with um, a pointer anyway on the on the on the crank so this engine will get set up with a pointer on the crank this will drive the distributor and the, the fine adjustment can be made on the engine. Okay, thanks for joining me in the garage then for a little bit of machining. Um, I'm going to call it good at that. Yeah, I should have beefed this up earlier, shouldn't I? Difficult to do actually, when you've only got a relatively small table and a relatively small number of T-slots. Anyway. 
quite pleased with that. Okay, you take care then and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello, there's my cam in place in the French block. Here's a two bolt timing cover. This just took me about 10 minutes to find. So let's just put this in loosely. Can't bolt it down too tight because um, it'll stop the cam from going around because there isn't a gasket on it. Let's just see if the cam turns. Yeah, cam turns. Okay. Here's a two bolt distributor that I borrowed off the sedan. I'd say, but um, the cupboard is bare. I uh, I just don't have any more of these lying around. I've used them all up. Okay, now that's just tried to drop into place. It isn't in place. It's very dangerous. If you bolted that up now, it would damp get everything would get damaged. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move that so it can't drop in there. And it's it's got to be 190 degrees around from there. Oh, maybe I'm lying. There. That's just dropped in nice and clean. Okay, so that's just, you know, in place. So you just need to see if you can move that up and down. Hang on. So here's a little pair of pliers. Let's just hold that. Can you see that that's got free movement there? That's telling you it's in the right place. And there, then when the cam goes round, which it goes round in that direction, it drives the distributor. So there you have a French dist uh, cam converted to 59AB front drive. It keeps it in fitting with my other vehicles. So the sedan, the coupe and the roadster are all crab distributors. The truck, which is parked outside, is also a crab distributor. So I'm quite pleased with that. That's uh, pretty good, I'd say. So what you're thinking is, Mart, why don't you just use the 59A cam? Wouldn't it have been easier? Well, yes it would be. But there's some subtle differences between the French cam and the 59A. The base circle on that French cam is smaller than the 59A. The French motors have a unique valve train. They have short valves and adjustable lifters that are longer than the type that are sold to use on a Ford. A, a, and a smaller base circle on the cam. Now, on I have used a 59A cam with French lifters, with French valves in another engine. In fact... In fact, this engine here that's in the sedan. But I had to take every lifter and shorten it to make up the difference between the base circle on the French cam and the base circle on the uh, 59A cam. On this build, I wanted to do something that would be simpler. I want to use the French valves, I want to use the French lifters, I want to use the French cam but I want to use a crab type distributor. So hence doing that machining job. I've got the setup now. I know how to do it. It isn't too difficult to set up and I can repeat it more or less at will if I need to do it again. Um, but also importantly, at some point I might try and rework the slot in the cam that's in Old Rusty, the slot that's machined wrong. 
I might use this setup and braise up the slot in that cam and re-cut it. It was all like a bit of a practice towards potentially maybe doing that job somewhere down the line. So anyway, so there we go. A successful job, I think. And um, one, in my view, that was worth doing. Plus, I got to use my milling machine, which I always enjoy doing. It's always a treat to use the milling machine. Even though I'm not much of a machinist. Okay, righto. I hope you found that interesting then. Thanks a lot. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. This is my milling machine, and in my milling machine, I've got a rotary burr, I've got a piston, I've got a bit of channel, I've got my rotary table, and I've just set it all up to mill this radius. Because, guess what? A French piston will fit a three and three quarter stroke engine and a four inch stroke engine and they use a 6 and 7 eighths rod. A Ford piston for a 3 and 3 quarter inch stroke engine will hit the crank because the French piston has more clearance here. So you have to modify them. This is another modification. Now I've done this mod to the pistons that are in the French motor in Old Rusty. And so I've set this up. I've used a French piston to kind of get a setting where I think it's reasonable. And I'm hoping that this one will work okay. I've used a depth stop against like the edge of the ev edge of it because I can't trust the dome. So from the edge of it down to there will be set to the same dimension as a French piston. I'm basing this on a method that I rigged up in a lathe many years ago. So I'm, I'm just, let's keep our fingers crossed and see how it goes. Just shy on that edge there. I think it'll be okay though. That's actually zero now. Okay. Right out. That's the um that's that side finished. I won't bother filming it, but I'll cut the other side. Then I'll uh try it on the engine. This is the last cut on the second side. Or rather the second last cut on the second side.
There we are, that's the last cut, so hopefully that piston is will fit on that motor. It don't leave a bad finish to be honest, and I can just gently deburr these edges. So what I'll do, I'll fit that to a rod and I'll put it on the crank and I'll show you you know what difference it's made. Hello. I've took the block off the uh, boring stand and fitted the crank back in and I've put this one piston and rod in because I wanted to check what the situation was down here as the piston comes down it's fouling on the crank at that point there so what I need to do is to put it back in to the jig, um, go to that side and make that side deeper. What it also shows is that this side here didn't need to go anywhere as deep in that way as, as that side. But I suppose it's good to try and kind of keep them even in some way. So let's try going 180 round. Well, that's weird, isn't it? Look, it's it has actually cleared on the other side. It does actually clear this side, just. It's very hard to get the camera to focus on exactly the right bit. But it needs to go deeper. Now, the problem is, what I have realised is that the um, this piston has ended up quite a lot lighter than the others so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is to do another one and not take as much off because what you can see there what you can see down there is that there's plenty of clearance between the crank throw and where I've cut it out it doesn't need to have that much clearance so this side so what I'm going to do I'm going to get another piston I'm going to put it in the jig which is still set up in the milling machine and I'm going to not go as deep probably go about 50 thou less deep so stop when I come to 50 on the dial and I'll go the same depth on that side, maybe a little bit shallower on that side, and a little bit deeper on this side, 150 thou deeper on this side, the back side of the piston, so the one that doesn't say front. And I can go a little bit shallower this side. I want to take less material off, you see, so I've got a better chance of trying to balance it with the others. Clunk. It'd be self clearance wouldn't it? It'd just knock that straight off as it goes round. Okay. Right, so back in a bit. Hello. I found a second piston. To be honest, I should have picked the worst piston and done like a. just dummied it up. And then, you know, once I'd got the method, picked uh, the best one. I've gone less deep that way by 75 thou. I've gone deeper that way on the back edge by 250 plus 75 thou and I've gone on that side I did exactly the same 75 thou less on the depth going that way uh, but about quarter inch less you know going like that dimension but on that side so I'm going to trial fit that now and see if it's okay. Fingers crossed. Back in a bit. Hello. Okay. I've got that piston in now. F to the front. There's the front. F to the front. I've got my lamp there so you can kind of see a bit more clearly. 
Let's see if we can get a look down there as it goes round. That's clear now. Hopefully this should show it going round and how close things get. There. There's about 40 thou clearance, which I think will be plenty. And there's more clearance there. That's about the tightest point there on that, that one, the big one. Okay. So I'm happy that I've gone, that I've got enough clearance without having too much. Could go a bit less on that side. But it turns over nicely now. These are the things you have to look for when you're putting mismatched components together. I mean this side here didn't need to go even that deep did it? So I'm hoping there that I've took off a, a relatively a smaller amount so that I can try and match the balances now. I'm going to look at the weights of the pistons. I have already looked at it and that's why I thought I would try and go less deep. Let's see how I get on then with the weights and uh, I'll be back in a bit. Bye. Hello. Um... I'm working on the French flathead, um, the, what I call the spalding engine because it, it came from spalding. Um, if you look here, there's like a little sharp edge there. So what I've been doing is just kind of just coming in and easing that edge a little bit, a little bit roughly using that. Um, in the die grinder predominantly on the inlets just two minutes each each uh, cylinder so I thought I'd just capture that before I finish it and what I've been doing I've just been putting this old um, pardon me I've just put, been putting this old valve in here just to protect the seat so I don't run onto the seat I won't film it, but um, I'll, sh I'll show you it when it's finished. Hello. Right, I did all those little, you know, um, semi-reliefs on there. And um, I've just gone through all 16 seats with this cutter. Now this is marketed in the UK as a Sykes pick event, but I believe it's a quick way. Uh, sorry, new way. New way. Um, and I was using this hand tool, but I found that I could just use this half inch drive in the drill and it made it a very quick and easy job. Just the lightest of licks, just to clean the seats not trying to cut them back at all just clean the seats what i'm working towards is the big clean up big wash big clean up and then start to reassemble but i'm trying to finish all the jobs that involve you know making a mess oh, i've also run a wire brush down the all the ports as well all the inlet ports and up around the bowls and up, up down into the ports as well. Um, a wire brush on an electric drill. I've got this old fashioned, um, uh, this old fashioned Black and Decker here. 
the good thing about this is that it spins very fast you know it uh, spins a lot faster than um, this one for instance so it works good for wire brushes yeah there's a lot of dust that I need to clean out I'm going to get a load of uh, degreaser and um, get it outside and jet wash it. But I've cleaned all around here with the uh, wire brush. Rele just done, just a, done a very small relief on this sharp edge here. Uh, that's the bore that's very not perfect. See the, the plate, it says 2C. I think that's like the second iteration, like 15th, that would be the first. 2 would be 30. 3 would be um, 45. 1st of the 10th, 85. This was reconditioned. Date de reception. 1st of the 10th, 85. Diameter Alessage Silene Cylindre 2C, second overbore 30 thou. Portes Villebrequin, which is a word I never did at school, so I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't know which one's Portes. I imagine the Portes are the mains and the Manatons are the. Um, it might be the other way around actually, I don't know, one or, one or the other, but they're both at the second iteration, which I imagine means 20,000. Have, have I measured them? I must have measured them. I've got to do this job here to seal that. I've got some more JB Weld. So that needs all cleaning out. It all needs cleaning out in the middle because it's all very messy. All very messy down there. It's not, it's not dirty, dirty, dirty. No, you know, like full of gunge. It's just, um, it's just uh, got lots of little chips and things in it. Uh, yesterday, last night, I got the crank and I put it in the lathe and I polished all the mains and I polished all the big ends as well and it's got oil on it now so hopefully that will sit just sit there and uh, be ready to go in um, <clears throat> on this table I've sorted out the all the con rods these are a match set the pistons um, of which there are eight 30 thou and one 60 thou <laughs> that's going to go on there plus 0.76 that's 30 thou there's a, these are the rings for this piston that one needs a ring that that one needs a ring these rings are on that table this one needs rings, but I've put some there. So these these are kind of as it was dismantled. But it was quite a few years ago now. But I'm hoping that these will just run okay. Okay. Righto. Thanks very much then. Uh, let's see how it goes when I finish... Um, putting it together and we'll you know we'll get it running and see how it goes okay thanks a lot then catch you next time bye
Well, there you are. I've just just given the block a clean. Uh, I'd already kind of wiped it inside, you know, inside the garage. Wiped it all out as much as I could. I just put, used this um, any UK viewers might be interested to know that this work, stuff works pretty well and it's 89p a bottle at um, B&M stores so that's good so it's looking pretty clean I wanted to get rid of all the machining dust there you can see the less than perfect bore on that cylinder which I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that it runs okay it ain't gonna run great is it but it's just one cylinder out the eight that's not going to be great this one is not real either but at least, at least this one feels okay when you put your fingers down it okay i'm going to get the airline now and try and blow the water off then i'll take it back inside and uh oil oil everything okay right I think I'll turn it over a couple of times to get the get the water out again. Okay, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Cheers then. Hello, uh, it's about an hour later. Um, I have wiped all the water out. I've had that little, you know, electric heater underneath it. Um, and it's amazing how fast things start to flash rust. So I've been round and I've got some um, chainsaw oil and I've oiled all the cylinders, all the lifter bores. Um, hang on. Yeah, I'll just flip the engine over. I've um, oiled all the cylinders, all the valve bowls, all the ports, the deck, this face, the deck face, you know, and the same on the other side. Uh, the lifter bores. There's a couple of bits in there that I want to try and clean a little bit better. But uh, by and large, everything's looking pretty good. Oh, I need, I need to do this repair here. I've got to seal that hole, put a plug in it, um, and seal up a hole here as well. Right, so anyway, there's there's the basic thing. I bought that stuff, that elbow grease, and uh, you know it's done a good job really. Saves using petrol and stuff like that. It's fairly cheap as well. Right, so. That's it for now then. I, I've got a couple of other things that I want to do and hopefully I can start reassembly, start getting one or two components back in. Okay, thanks a lot then. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello, uh, it's the next day. It's gone rather cold today. I'm all wrapped up with multiple layers and uh, my hood on so it's not a good look for filming but I have to put up with it one of the jobs that I kind of forgot to do it's another little part of the French the adaptation of the French block is this area here down in the front corner which is the road draft tube on you know conventional Ford engines isn't on a French engine it's the drain back to the oil pan um, it's from from the valley area and from the front um, area where the cam gears are you have to allow this to drain into the oil pan the French pan is cut away it doesn't have that triangular piece like on a Ford pan. On, on my Roadster I didn't modify this and what I did I just cut the piece out of the gasket and it kind of drains back through the gap in the gasket.
But I thought on this one I would cut it and just grind it away a bit there to give a little bit of clearance. No set dimensions or anything. I've covered all the engine up and stuffed rags up the bores just to kind of help keep it a bit clean. Probably a bit deeper than I needed to go, but uh, you know, not bad. Managed to not make too much mess. Well, no mess really, and it took five minutes. That was a pretty neat way of doing it, wasn't it? Just cutting the slits and then breaking the pieces out. Okay, good, right. Another little job off the list. The next job, oh, there's two jobs here, is to drill that hole down there. That hole, you should be able to see daylight through it. And tap 5 8 UNF. So I'm going to put a plug in it. And then that passageway there needs to be filled with JB Weld. I've stuffed some a paper towel down the hole there. This tap is 5.8 UNF and that's 3 8 So I've done, I've got a 3 8 socket extension there look and then I'm just going to use this on here. It doesn't have to be too well get it as straight as you can sort of thing. Oh, what you don't want is the whole block to move and the engine stand just as you're trying to get started. What I'll do, I'll, um, I'll tip it upside down and then poke the paper out from underneath and then blow it through so 
all the mess comes this way. I could just try this, couldn't I? There's the plug. Got an Allen key in it, and I'll put some Hylomar on it. Should do it. Okay, the next thing I need to do is um, block up this passage here. There's a passage there that goes down that way. Well, what I need to do now is kind of um, tip this so it's kind of over that way, which is a bit dodgy I need to get the engine hoist in here and lift it off this corner this is the area where this is the area where uh, concerned with and if you look down there you should be able to see my fingers down there so I'm going to damn this end down here with a, a rubber glove and I'm going to fill that area there with JB Weld it's just so it seals off that area there okay right let's get on with that then mixed up a bit of JB Weld I think I might need a bit more than this I forgot to show, I stuffed like a rubber glove up the other side of the hole where you can see my fingers, I've stuffed a rubber glove there and um, hold it on with that, this, uh, it's actually a thing up an angle grinder piece of metal and um, that clamp I'll mix a bit more up You have to hold it at this angle, otherwise it kind of runs out. Although it's quite cold today, so maybe it wouldn't tend to run too much today. I have degreased it and wiped it all out. Not like filler, is it? You can't sort of smooth it. It tends to, you tend to lift it. Okay, a couple of little bits there that can be sanded off, so that's okay. What I think I'll do, I think I'll put that electric fire kind of underneath this area. Yeah, that's not too bad. I don't think. I think that's all right. A little closer look. There's a couple of holes there, but the bit we're trying to block is actually down there, so I think that'll be okay. And there's the other plug in place there. That's just kind of bottomed into the end of the tap that I did. I didn't drill very, you know, I didn't tap very far down. And that's got Hylomar on it. Because it's kind of all leaning like that, I was a bit concerned that it might try and tip, but I, I tested it by trying to lift the end of the hoist and it there's still a lot of weight holding that end down so I thought okay fair enough it, it's it's okay it's not going to go so although I've done it completely out of order that 
is the sort of conclusion of the boss removal. All this boss area here has now been removed. And that's the last little bit. There's a little thing there, but that's nothing. It's just part of the casting. This could be drilled for a pipe plug. I, I used 5.8 UNF because it actually the hole is very close to the tapping size for 5.8 UNF, but you could probably use a plug tap a plug in there. See that look? 19th of the 6, 67. That's when this block was cast. 19th of June, 67. There's a bit of a sharp edge there. So it's just a, a kid really, isn't it? So that's 14 years after flathead production ended in the USA. So there's one job done today. And there's another. It's annoying me that there's two little pinholes there. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I was pointing the camera at that then, but uh, I've just kind of bodged around with this uh, kebab skewer and uh, smoothed it out a little bit. Okay, jolly good. Righto. Another little session on a surprisingly cold day. Okay. Back when there's more to show. Cheers then. Bye.